Hi, my name is Julius Jones. I'm a curator, historian, and professor. And in all of these roles, I get to do what I love the most, which is share history. I believe it's vitally important that we all come to an understanding of our past that will allow us to actualize the present and the future that we want for ourselves. I'm so excited to have this opportunity to talk to you a little bit about my work and why I think it's important. History to me is much more than the random accumulation of facts and dates and names, but really it's about drawing meaning and understanding from how people confronted the most pressing challenges of their time so we can think about how we can confront the most pressing challenges of our time. As someone who specializes in 20th century United States history and who looks at the experiences of marginalized communities here in Chicago and throughout the United States, it's really important for me to understand what exactly happened, what was going on at that time, what were the issues and challenges that people were dealing with as they were trying to actualize the best future for themselves. I look at people's aspirations, their hopes, their dreams, their visions for themselves, their families, their loved ones, and their communities, and I want to see how they made those aspirations come to fruition. We all are familiar with the term the American dream, but it's actually a fairly recent uh, historical phenomenon. It's only now about 90 years old. A historian named James Truslow Adams coined the term in his book, The Epic of America. He believed that America was about the ability to imagine a richer, fuller life for yourself, for your family, for your progeny. And so he believed that this had come to define America. Yet in the depths of what was the Great Depression, he thought that Americans had lost this sense, this hope, this idealism. And he believed by hearkening back to the past, we can figure out how best to actualize the present and the future that we want for ourselves in this country. I believe that now, in our contemporary moment, the past still speaks to us with important lessons uh, that we can share with one another about how we want our present and our future to turn out. I'm always struck by how often a deep historical understanding is vitally important to contemporary issues and discussions, yet so often that understanding is lacking in the discourse. I think a lot about conversations going on in the news or social media and how they seem almost void of any historical understanding, void of any way to make sense or contextualize the contemporary discourse with a deep understanding of the context of the event. I think about our discussion around monuments. Monuments are a very important part of any society. Anywhere you go, you'll see statues and murals and things commemorating people and events. For some people, these monuments are a sense of pride. They take great um, umbrage at the specter of them being removed. For other people, these monuments represent oppression. They represent a way in which a edifice has been built to privilege certain people, certain experiences, certain stories over the other. I believe that in order to understand a monument, we have to understand its history. And what I find fascinating about monuments is that they actually have two histories. The first is the history that they seek to commemorate. What is this monument trying to teach us about the past? What story is the monument trying to tell us? Who is the monument of? What did they do to make people believe they were worthy of a monument in the first place. If it is an event that is being commemorated, 
what was this event? What occurred at the time? But another history that monuments have is of the monuments itself. People do not erect statues immediately after people die or immediately after events. So the question is, what were the motivations of the people who decided to erect those statues and those monuments? Why did they do that? What were they trying to commemorate? What were they trying to communicate? We often find that people have motivations for erecting monuments and statues that differ from some of the motivations of the people even who they are commemorating. So it's very important that we understand both of these histories when we start making decisions. When we are deciding whether or not to remove a monument, we must consider both of that monument's history. The history and the motivations of the people and events that monument is seeking to commemorate and the history of the motivations of the people who decided to commemorate that event by building the monument in the first place. History also helps us empathize with one another. We understand that people see events and experiences differently. There is no one history, but there are histories. And the more we can include different and diverse perspectives in our understanding of historical events, we realize that it's important and vital to a full and complete historical grasp and development of knowledge. I think a lot about experiments where they'll show a group of people the same clip of a movie. And then they'll ask that group of people to describe what they saw. You'd be amazed at how different and unique and divergent those experiences in, are. How differently people recall an event that they just experienced together in very short period of time. Now imagine adding the passage of years or decades of, in centuries. Imagine adding other lived experiences that help shape people's memories and understandings of their experiences. All of that together teaches us that there is no one definitive way to remember, but there is multiple ways and multiple perspectives. And that helps us understand the fullness of history when we bring all those perspectives together. We have to listen to one another and how we experience our lived realities and look out for diverse and unique perspectives of how people experience the past. I think a lot about our current moment and particularly our political discourse. I'm struck by how we experience the same events, but how we recall them so differently. But I think an understanding of histories and the unique perspectives can help us paint a fuller picture. I'll close by pointing out this image. It's of a protester who was involved in the events at the Capitol of January 6, 2021. He is waving the battle flag of the Confederacy as he walks through the halls of the United States Capitol. At no point during the Civil War did that flag ever fly in the halls of that building. But yet here in 2021, we see that flag in the United States Capitol. Why is that? What does that flag symbolize? What does it mean for that to happen? We may all have different unique experiences, different responses based on our own experiences. But an understanding of history and the lived experience of the past can help us come to an understanding 
about the fullness of what that symbolizes. And I think when we come to that history, we'll be able to stand, and it is in my hope that through a better understanding of history, we will be able to actualize a better present and future for all. Thank you. Thank you.